Okay, so I want to go over what I think is an ideal sump pump discharge setup. So a sump pump discharge, ideally, you want to have three things, okay? You want, number one, you want to have a freeze relief system. Number two, you want to have an air gap. And number three, you want your line coming out of the house to be uncoupled from the line underground. And we're going to go over this. So it's critical that you have a way, your sump pump should be able to continue to work even if your line freezes. All right. And so what I'm about to show you is probably overkill for Middle Tennessee area, but if you live in a northern, colder state, to me, this is the way to go. So this video would be extremely helpful if you're getting ready to install a sump pump system. All right, so let me, let me show you this mock-up that I have made. So here we have, so here we have a four inch schedule 40 uh, line. So from here, this is the part that's underground, probably like, this is just an example, but the, the, the lengths can vary, but like from here down is going to be underground. And this would actually be a little bit of a little longer. And we're going to look at some photos too, in just a minute. So this is typically coming out of your house, coming from the pump is an inch and a half discharge line. And it's usually going to come through the siding or the rim joists of the house. And it's going to go into this Schedule 40 4-inch PVC. So I mentioned we, we, we want to see three things, right? Number one is you need to have your pipe coming out of your house uncoupled from the pipe being buried underground. So in this case, this is indeed uncoupled. Now the reason for that is for frost heaving. When the ground freezes and thaws, this is actually going to rise and fall, okay, depending on the frost and thaw cycle of the ground. So we have this uncoupled, okay, now an air gap. We do want to maintain an air gap, so that means that this pipe here should not be lower than an imaginary line here. So like, because this is actually going to be your freeze relief port. So if this line ever froze, okay, the water is going to be able to come out of here as kind of like an emergency exit. So this, this pipe cannot be lower than that point there. And so, so you have uncoupled lines, you've got your freeze relief here, and you've got your air gap up here. Okay. So, you know, it's okay. So you pump, pumps the water through here, down through here. It's going to go through this four inch. You can use three inch, but four inch is a little more ideal. It's uh, going to go down through here. And then typically what people do, this is all going to be underground. The easiest way is to use a pop-up diverter. And this is, this is, these will lift up to let the water out and then they'll close when it's, when it's done pumping. And so sometimes, you know, if this ever get got froze, this water is going to be able to come out of here, your freeze relief, uh, frost, uh, freeze relief line. But on the bottom of this, you're going to see this little slot. Okay. That's to the idea there is you can underneath this, you can bury crushed rock. You can put a small, <clears throat> uh, dry well or just a couple bags of rock. And this can actually drain out rather than just when it's done pumping rather than just sitting in this pipe. So the idea is it lets that water drain out. The problem is these little, these dry wells that people put in, they're usually going to get filled with water. Okay. In Tennessee, you got a lot of clay and the ground doesn't perk all that well. All right. So now let's look at some photos from the internet. Let me set this camera down. <clears throat> We're going to look at a few photos and go over 
some of the pros and cons of different systems that you're going to see uh, people use. Okay. Okay, so here we have the discharge coming out of the house, and it's going to go into this freeze protection device, which is a good device. So we have, this is a good system. We have uncoupling. This pipe is going to be able to rise and fall according to the freeze thaw of the ground. We have an air gap. So if, if this line ever froze, the water can come out of here. I don't care for the gutter downspout sharing the line with the sump pump. That would be my only you know, complaint against this system. Okay, here's another setup. You have probably your primary pump kicking the water out of here. It's uncoupled into the four inch PVC. This is probably a backup pump or a backup line. It's probably a backup pump and it's plumbed into this same system, same line. What I don't see in this system is a freeze relief device or setup. So if, if, if underground, if this got froze, if, if this froze, how, where does the water, where's it gonna go, right? So this could potentially all freeze up because the water can't discharge anywhere. That's the only complaint that I would have here with this system. Okay, here is a, what they call a freeze relief device. What is the issue with this? All right, it's a good system. It's a good setup. Why did they put this so low would be my only complaint. So I would have put this a little bit higher. Look how this snow has almost covered these ports. So the idea with this device is that if the ground freezes, the water can still come out of these ports. I would have just raised that up. I'd have brought that up a little higher. So here is the same, basically the same device, the freeze relief device. And this is actually, this actually kept this pump pumping because you can tell that all this ice around this discharge, but yet these ports are still allowing this water to come out. So this is like a, a good example of how these work. So rather than everything freezing up, this still has a way to pump out. So that, that's, a, that's a decent system. The only problem is it's not uncoupled, you know, and so these pipes get under a lot of pressure from the freeze and thaw. That's the only, really only thing is this is all likely gl glued together. Here, here we have another example of the freeze relief device. Four inch, that's good. Everything's good here. It's all glued together. That's the only would be the only complaint I could sh say and I don't know why they, the opening is so large around this. I guess it was hard to get a good clean opening, but that's gonna have to be patched in Okay, here is another freeze relief device. So the water comes out out here and down You got your air gap it's going to go down through here, four inch PVC, good. And if it ever froze, it can come out of here, come out of these openings. The only problem is this water, and you can tell where it's likely been hitting the side of the house. So to really improve this device, you'd want to have the back of this to be blocked. So water could only go this way or to the sides, but not hit the house. You don't want the water, water to hit the house. And you'll see this a lot where people just stick a pipe out. This is a very shrewd, crude way to do it because you're not getting the water away from your foundation. It's just like discharging right here and it's going to work its way right back down into the pump. And so this obviously is just a quick way to do it. Same thing here. This discharge pipe, pipe just comes out. It just comes out. And it's going to erode the grant, erode this soil eventually. So this is a quick way to do it, but you see that a lot. Also, <clears throat> if you're mowing the grass and you get in front of this and the pump kicks on, you're going to get, you know, uh, uh, basically like you're going to get a shower or you're going to get soaked. 
So anyway. Oh, and then this is, I was up on a roof the other day and this is actually, this actually ties into what I was talking about. Look what the UV damage did to this flange here, this roof flashing piece. So that brings up another point I want to go over is PVC should be painted when it's outside, but you hardly ever see PVC painted. I mean, people just don't go to that length. But over time, the UV light from the sun will cause this PVC to get brittle and it could crack. So these are just things to keep in mind when you're doing a sump pump discharge line. I know this is very over the top, but it, it's really the principle of the system. You know, even if you don't, if you even if you don't use like four inch, if you use three inch, that's one thing. But you want to have your air gap, you want to have your freeze relief uh, device or system or some way for that water to, to still pump in the case, in, in the instance that your line gets frozen. And you want to have your air gap. Those are really the three things. So how you discharge it is people can use the pop-ups uh, or you can just discharge it free to air or, you know, to daylight. <clears throat> And that's, that's going to depend on your exact situation. But <clears throat> you want to design these systems in anticipation for the cold weather, right? So in Middle Tennessee, this is all probably a little bit overkill because it just doesn't get that cold. But when you get up north, you really want to have this system. It's still good to install, you know, in, in Tennessee because once in a while it does get cold. So it's always better to kind of go overboard with these systems so this is just something to keep in mind please let me know what you think of this or maybe i've missed something or whatever just give me your thoughts on this and i appreciate you watching all right thank you